Okay, I uh, start off with a MCX-2, which you see here. It's a great uh, beginning helicopter. It has uh, two blades for extra stability. And basically when you're flying it, it's, it's so easy to fly. Um, it has special electronics so that you can sit there and hover with no effort, with actually hands off the controller and you can knock it and it'll go right back and, and hover for you. So it's a great, really great uh, learning heli. Um, but after a while, you know, it gets definitely, uh, you want more. And so what I ended up doing is I moved to the MCPX and it is a full collective pitch helicopter single blade. Now what they mean by uh, collective pitch is the blades actually tilt uh, as you're flying it. This happens to be a fly barless system which means it doesn't have this stabilizing bar up here that the MCX-2 has. Now the jump in flying these two is significant so as you're moving up you got to be really aware that that it's it's going to be like learning all over again. Uh, one of the things is it doesn't hover for you. It's going to really move along really fast. Every little adjustment is going to be very radical. To hover, you actually have to make it hover yourself. The other thing I would suggest uh, purchasing right as you get your your new. Uh, Heli is on a collective pitch system. It's so hard to fly. It would really be smart to go ahead and purchase a simulator and learn to fly it on your computer. You're going to save a ton of money on broken parts if you just go ahead and get a simulator. Uh, I use and chose the Phoenix RC simulator and the reason I did that was it was one of the better ones and it actually had the MCXP uh, in the package or downloadable. Uh, one of the others, uh, some of the others just don't even have this model. And it's kind of important to get the one that has your model because it really, you set up everything according to your heli and it flies really like and simulates really your helicopter. So I think my Phoenix uh, RC simulator cost around $129, but believe me, you'll spend that in broken parts real quickly if you're going to try to learn indoors on a collective pitch helicopter. So check some of those out on the web. Okay, when you first pull the MCPX out of the package and you go to fly it, one of the very first things is that uh, you turn it on and you grab your controller and and you're used to down here is off and turns the blades off okay so it confused me so badly when I first started this up because there was really no directions of the change in the controllers again I don't know all the terms yet and uh, I'm just a beginner like you but Basically, when I started going up and starting to try to fly, it, it did nothing. It got the blade spun quicker and quicker and harder and harder, and I really got frightened by it because it was just I didn't want to crash it. And eventually I picked it up and felt that mid-throttle, it was actually blowing down. And I'm like, something's messed up with this. So after playing with it a while, I finally took it back to the store. The store guy you know, played with it and he said the same, Jesus, blowing down. He didn't know what was going on, even though he was flying a MCX-2 also. So he had never flown a collective pitch. Long story short, basically on the control, when you go up, it's blowing down. And at about mid-stick, that's when the collective pitch kicks in and you begin to go up and it starts hovering up. So that's a big change from uh, the uh, simpler models. Now the thing is 
when you start going up, your natural action because of your beginner model, uh, when you went to crash, you would you would go down for off. Well, going down for off tur turns it full blast down and slams to the floor. So you don't want to do that. And what you want to do is learn to hit this button on this controller. And this is um, uh, called throttle hold. And basically that cuts the cycling of the uh, propellers and, and puts it to limp. And we all know flying indoors, you want to go limp as soon as you're about to hit anything. So you get really used to uh, hitting that button. Another thing is, is I've learned to uh, go from being a beginner and, and steering with my thumbs like this. It's much better control to go ahead and learn how to fly using this. And that really also gives you the advantage of being able to hit that uh, throttle off or throttle hold button. So I'm t trying to teach myself to go ahead and just use the controls as the professionals do. And it seems to be working out uh, really well for me. Okay, another thing that uh, concerned me when I first got my new blade was, can you hear that noise? It's a little servo motor that's kind of chattering a little bit. And again, I thought it was broke. I got a bad unit. But that is typical with this particular unit. So don't be concerned. If you run into that, I think all of them have that particular chatter, but I didn't stumble across that on the web as, as being an issue or, or there. Another thing you may want to consider is on this controller, when it comes to you, when you move the throttle up and down, there's like a click, 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 click. You can feel it. It's feedback. And I believe that that's for flying uh, model planes and not necessarily optimum for helicopters. And what I found is, as I did that, one click up would be too much, one click down would be too little, and I start going down. So it was really hard to stay at a particular uh, hovering height. So I found on the web some, you know, guys that modified it and I went ahead and did it myself and basically you just have four screws unscrew them I've already removed the screws here and take it apart this right here is a little piece on the throttle that you can take off and it's just got a little bump in it and it runs along these ridges here making click 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 so what I did is I took this piece and uh, and just put it in the vise and flattened that little niche out of it and put it back in now on the web the first one that I had seen the guy just merely turned it around so that it just wouldn't interfere at all. But then I lost some resistance to the throttle stick and it didn't, it just felt way too loosey goosey. So I just smashed out that little kink in there and put it back on there so that it was still putting tension against the throttle, but uh, uh, did not do the click, 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 click thing. And then you just close it all up and screw it back together. And you're good to go. Nice and smooth, but still has some tension.